Welcome to this installment of the Straight Edge Game Room, where today we're going to be looking at Electronic Castlevania 2, Simon's Quest. I'm expecting terrible things out of this. You know, I don't have any other physical copies of any Castlevania game, so I just used Konami games in general. Thanks a lot, Video Giant. Did you really need to put the sticker there? Let's get into it. How do you make a convoluted, confusing game even more convoluted and confusing? Look no further than Tiger Electronics. Well, what are you waiting for? Get up! You know, I like to think that whoever made this particular Tiger Electronic was fired from his job and he later went on to form Radica. That's not meant to be taken as a serious history lesson. That's just how my mind works. You know, I hear a lot of terrible things about Simon's Quest on the NES. How well warranted that is, I really can't say. I had a roommate who used to play it a lot, but I didn't play it all that much myself. But I know what that game looks like. This game is a whole different animal. And that's an animal that you do want to run over on the highway. If you played any Castlevania game on any console, you're inclined to use the directional pad for left, right, climbing up and down stairs, and the whip would be somewhere on the right. But no, this game gets as far away from common sense as possible. Once again, we gotta deal with the ever nagging problem of that camera fuzzing up every now and then. But in any case, I'm gonna show you the unit itself. It's got excellent artwork on the cover. Dracula is all like, Oh, how did you Jehovah Witnesses find my castle? And Belmont's like, Your watchtower gave you away. <laughs> I came at dusk because I knew you would be awake. <laughs> Okay, all right, no more dad jokes. Um, <laughs> uh, look, right here, man. Whip up, whip down on the directional pad. Why? Why couldn't the whip be over here? Instead, they put the whip here. What sense does that make? And then the jump, jump up and jump forward? And the sword, which was the throwing dagger, by the way. Were they really trying to just mess up this game? And... It's amazing I made it to level 2 with how confusing this control is. Could you really make this game more convoluted to play? I mean, I hear many times that Simon's Quest is one of the weaker titles in the Castlevania series. And they made it a hundred times worse. Unbelievable. But I do love this artwork. Not only is the control bad, they made the sprites kind of big for an LCD handheld. So you're really in a tight spot and there's things trying to kill you and they get right up in your face, right on your back and right over your head and even at your feet. There's homeless people under the bridge panhandling at my ankles. Go away, I only have plastic. Once in a while the game gives you a break and gives you some orbs to replenish your energy but trying to kill everything, trying to outrun stuff is incredibly tedious. It took me a while to figure out that I had to knock off the skeleton's shield before I could kill him. But it doesn't help that there's a fish man right in front of me. And then sometimes there's a hand trying to grab my ankles and there's these stupid bats right above my head. It does look like when you level up the LCD template changes a little bit to give you more variety of what enemies you're facing, but good luck trying to kill them all before they kill you. You know, it's not a good combination to make a tedious game with terrible control. It's just not a good idea. Not only that, I can only make it to level 2 because of this game's terrible, terrible control. I'm not trying to hate on it because it's a Tiger Electronic. I try to be fair and balanced, but I really can't say anything good about this game because it's so confusing. 
And why does this game have two jump buttons? Why? I honestly don't know what the difference between jump up and jump forward is because they both seem to do the same thing. I don't know an appropriate time to use that throwing dagger. It does kill enemies, but you use it once and that's it. You can't use it anymore from what I've seen anyway. And I've already talked about that whip, but I can't get over that the whip is on a directional pad. Why would you make this game like that? Why? You know, I saw this game for $30, and $30 only because it's a collector item. And, you know, I am starting to regret that price tag, but I really can't cry too much about it because the people I bought it from seem to be really nice people. It's from a toy store called The Toy Box near downtown Glendale, so I'm not knocking them. But whoever made this game, I hope you're satisfied. Well, all my whining and griping aside, I am glad to have this game on the show and review it for all of you to see. I can't recommend this game by any means. If you are a Castlevania enthusiast and a diehard Castlevania collector, I just gotta advise you, don't have your expectations too high for this game. It isn't Symphony of the Night. Well, thanks for watching. I appreciate you guys dropping in. Please leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you again next time.